everybody, I'm Amy. And I'm Audrea. And this is the Red Crown. So grab a cup of coffee. Or your cup of tea. Maybe a little something on the rocks. Well, let's get started. Okay, wait, what's your, what's your cup say? It says, you've got this. And every, no, the others. every day, dope. Okay. you've got this. For a second, I thought it said, don't be a dope. Oh, <laughs> no, no, it's a, I, there's a mushroom coffee blend and I like this mug. It just, it's fun. Anyway, that's nice. what that's from. But it, there is actual tea in it today that I'm drinking constant comment. For those of you playing tea bingo along with us at home. All right. Yes, my tea. <laughs> uh, today we are talking about how to write a short romance by Nell Alexander. And it's a teeny tiny book. My nose is bigger than the book. <laughs> I'm in a silly mood today. You're just going to have to be okay with it. Okay. 54 pages is how many <laughs> pages in this book. All right. So this book is for anyone who wants to, who aspires to write romance, whether it be regular romance or short romance, but this is for obviously short romance writers. I think it can also be for people who are curious about whether or not this is the route to go. Cause there's lots of different types of romance. Yes. Ones that you wouldn't even know existed if you didn't randomly find them somewhere. Or he like them in a, by in accident a or on purpose. Find them, <laughs> yes, yes. All right. So, uh, and it's if you want to put romance or some of the tropes into your regular book, this would be a great book for that as well. All right. So we were talking about short romance, and we said how it's good for putting romance into your whatever genre you're writing. You learn some of the beats and things like that. And then with romance, you think of you know, a love story. And that's like the main thing. But she points out in here that you can have a romance within another genre. So there could be a second storyline about the detective and the survivor of a home invasion that, you know, sparks fly by the end of the story, even though it's not a romance, it could still be in the book. And following some of her beats and tropes, will help you make that so that it's a storyline that people want to read. And if it's a storyline you want to continue in a ser in the series, then you'll be able to see what that should look like and how you can keep it going so that your readers want to continue to read it. Exactly so. Um, and when she's defining the romance, a short romance in here, that's between 7,000, if you're doing it as a short romance and not putting it inside another genre or inside another book, it's between 7,000 and 20,000 words is what she's writing about in this particular book. So particularly short. And because they're so short, she also mentioned something called insta-love. And insta-love is exactly what it <laughs> sounds like. People fall in love instantly, like love at first sight and we see the insta love as tropes in things like fantasy and um sci-fi like for example that you might have faded mates in a alpha book or books about werewolves you, they might be faded mates or bonded mates when it comes to vampires you know they look at them and all of a sudden they know that's the person they're supposed to be with for the rest of their lives but she which said, is 100 million years yeah <laughs> <laughs> and she says one thing you're going to have to wrap your your mind around in if you're going to write short romance is that insta love is real because it has to be in your book many of many people don't believe in love and first sight in irl in real life but when you're writing short romance it could happen it does happen all the time and it's so funny because i'll be reading a book or watching a movie and going what they like what no they just met like this is not realistic but it's a book it's a movie it's not supposed to necessarily be realistic 
But now I know that it's actually called Insta Love. I didn't know what it was. I used to just think it was silly because <laughs> I, I'm not a romance reader. However, if y'all have been paying attention, y'all know that these books make me want to write things that I don't normally write or read. So of course, I have an idea. You'll be proud of me though. I have not started the idea. Good for you. But I have an idea. <laughs> You win this round because I started. Let me guess. You got an idea and you started. I started. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I did. But I've put. I've since put it aside because I was trying to get it done in a cycle where I was taking a class. And so anyway, I've since put it away for later. But I'm in love with my idea. And we'll talk about more about my idea later. But yes. But you watch. You see, so you don't might not read romance books. And I read them. I read romances a lot when I was a teenager. And then it was either... I read Stephen King, not romance. <laughs> I read <laughs> Agatha Christie and, and Ellery Queen. I read, read Ellery Queen <laughs> when I was a teenager. But I would go through... I remember when I was a little kid, my grandmom's house, we had to go to the thrift shop so I could buy like 10 books with my dollar. <laughs> and they they were so easy to read anyway and they were all those harlequin basic super light the purple the purple and yellow yeah, yeah. those were the ones but you watch romance you said you watched the hallmark movie channel oh my gosh so that was the other thing oh no i don't watch hallmark movie channel what i'm not a hallmark movie channel person okay no those are a, those are a little campy for me how oh, dare you just a little campy for me however I do have friends that are addicted and every time I see any kind of like post or ad about a Hallmark channel, I always have to tag her husband to let him know that it's time that he's got to get ready because it's coming. No, but what I realized in reading this is that I don't read romance. I mean, I don't mind a romance thread within reason in one of my shoot them up murder mysteries. Like that, I don't mind that. But my favorite movies are romance, sweet romance, like Notting Hill or The Holiday. Yeah. Like, I love those kinds of movies. Like, you know, I'm just a pearl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. Like, I love that, right? I don't want to read it, but I don't mind watching Julia Roberts or Sandra Bullock play it out. Like The Proposal. Hello. Loved it. Yeah. I don't want to read the book, though. That makes like, I love rom-coms. Those are my favorite. Oh my gosh. Yes. Love them. Yes. And I mean, all right behind Die Hard. But but honestly, Die Hard has a romance theme in it too. Because because he's trying to get back to his wife in every single one of them. Yes. <laughs> and as she points out, getting back to the book we're reading <laughs> today. As she, <laughs> as she points out. One of these expectations the readers have for romance, short stories, long stories, etc., is either a happily ever after, H-E-A, or a happily for now, H-F-N. And Die Hard, the first one, did have a happily for, it, it was an H-F-N, happily for now. Because then there was- We thought it was going to be a happily ever after. Yeah. Until the second one came out and we realized it wasn't. Well, like, okay, so Reacher, that's another- I read Reacher and I like the Reacher show. They're a happily for now. Yes. Because each one, he goes into a new town. There's a new girl, but it's not, it's done well. Yes. And everyone goes into whatever, knowing that he travels. He's not coming back. This is for now. And everyone leaves happy. Yeah. So there's, there's different yeah, I know. I, I can I can find it in what I like. Yes. I, I just don't like campy. Campy, yeah. There's romance tropes in just about everything. Just about. Yeah. Not everything. But there are. There, I mean, it's one, it's the most popular genre on the planet. Romance is. So and then sci-fi, I think, after that. I thought it was mystery after that. I don't know. I just thought it was sci-fi. It could be mystery. I okay. Know. So okay. the other thing, and then so what I think is funny. So do I need to do an alert? I don't think I need to do an alert. What I think is funny okay. is she writes sweet romance. Yeah. Sweet romance is 
everybody keeps their clothes on. There's no sexy time. I mean, you know, it's going to happen, but you don't talk about it. Like it's just mm-hmm. sweet, sweet romance. And she said in one of her books, she tried a little spanking <laughs> and her readers were not happy. So whatever you choose to do, make sure <laughs> you know your readers and you give them what they want. Yes. You can try new things, but just be ready for them to say, that is not what you've been doing. We do not like it. Go back to what you've been doing. Exactly so. Which is another point she makes is that make sure that whatever you give them in the first one is what you continue to give them. Mm -hmm. Because if they have expectations from the first book, they loved it because of X, Y, Z. And they pick up the second book and they loved it because you still had X, Y, Z. And they pick up the third book and you don't have X, Y, Z in it. You're going to lose readers. Some of them won't even want to continue. Like forget that your fourth one went back to the right way. You've lost them because you've broken your promise to them. It's very important that you keep your promises yeah. that you make to your readers. Yeah. yeah. And it- as, as an avid reader, you will lose your readers. I'm telling you from personal experience, (laughs) I won't go back. I won't go back. You've wasted, you have wasted my time. Oh dear. Well, yes, yes, we don't want to do that. Wow. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Not make Amy mad. Okay. So next we go. So she talks about what a short romance is and what it isn't and how it's achieved in as short as 7,000 words. And then the next chapter she goes into is short romance beats. And she does reference Gwen Hayes's book that's called Romancing the Beat. It's like the romance writer's Bible. So if you, we'll put that in the show notes. Again, it's called Romancing the Beats by Gwen Hayes. And she outlines all the beats for the romance. But here she is condense them down to the beats that are necessary for a short romance, depending on what type you're writing. And she, like, for example, beat number five is first kiss or first spark of romance or contact if you're writing clean romance and it doesn't, you don't have a kiss at at five. In clean romance, sometimes the first kiss does not come until the end of the, the book or the movie, then that's the end of the movie that little kiss which is a lot of the hallmark stuff and finally they have a kiss at the end or whatever so i like how she 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 makes it easy for you by putting those outlining those beats um for when you want to write your story did you have anything about beats no um she did say that make sure for you as the writer that you're enjoying it yes because if you're not enjoying what you're doing you're not going to do it and let's be honest as a writer you're working for yourself and you got to make yourself do it. And if you're not enjoying it, you're you're going to come up with every reason not to do the thing that needs to get done. So make sure that um, you love what you're doing. And if you and if you start this and you see that it it's not your cup of tea, try something else. You can still use the little storyline that you've come up with this in another book. Mm-hmm. Like it could be the romance storyline in your $75,000 book. <laughs> You're a 75,000 word book. Like it could be a storyline in another book. Okay. And then she moves to Insta Love. The, the series. And we talked about that again. And Insta Love doesn't have to be love at first sight. It could be a second chance. So they knew each other before, which is why you see a lot of the short Insta loves are second chance romances because you they have all that backstory already. They were high school sweethearts or college sweethearts or something like that. And then they get back together. So they have all that history that you didn't have to write. You just implied it. What does your cup say? I've been wanting to ask, what does your mug say today? Oh, everything that is real was imagined first. That's a good one. Which yeah. I think is apropos for us. Yes, it is. All right. So we talked about a little bit about what Insta love is. It's, it's, it's bank. It means it's what it says. It's instant falling in love instantly or second chance romance or in the others, like the faded mate or bonded mate and so forth. And how you have to believe that it's real. If you're writing short romance, you have to believe that two people could meet and fall in love in the space of 7,000 
words or 8,000 or 20,000 words. The next, she talks about a series. And as, as Amy mentioned, if you write a book that love that people love that first book and they want to come back, they want to come back more, more of the same. So that's why you want to, some people I've been taking a romance class called, and they may have it again in future, in, in the future, but it's called Insta Love University. And it's amazing. And it's put on by Hope Ford. Um, if she has it in the future, uh, we'll, uh, we'll put a link in there. By the time you guys see this, it'll it'll be over. But um, maybe in the future, she'll have it again. But it's marvelous. It's put on by Hope Ford. And the, the classes are marvelous, absolutely marvelous. And they're taught by a bunch of other romance uh, writers. So Inez Johnson is teaching one. And yeah, so the, a lot of, and Hope, of course, teaches uh, quite a few of them, but it's been marvelous. By the time you guys see this, Insta Love University um, won't, will be over, most likely, um, but she might have it in future years. And her name is Hope Ford. We'll put her name down there in the um, show notes. And Hope Ford also writes, wrote a little book like this called, I didn't, I have this one on, I have hers on Kindle. It's called Short Story Romance Handbook. So if you guys are, anybody out there is high input and you want all the little short romance books, the ones that I've looked at so far are this one, which is excellent. The Short Story Romance Handbook by Hope Ford and How to Write Short Romance Kindle Books by Nina Harrington. And Nina has written quite a few um, nonfiction for authors. But getting back to this one, um, when you're starting to write a series, some of the authors who write a series of uh, short, rom short romance, um, they put them on a grid like a or a spreadsheet. There's that word, the S word that <laughs> I love. That you love. <laughs> um, so you, you put the title and who's the hero and who's the heroine or um, the female lead and then the town or whatever their trope is going to be and then you have your all of your your stories in one place and you just start writing them but you make sure you're covering all the tropes you want to cover and which tropes are in which book and which which location a lot of them are set in like one location like they invent a like she mentions Montrose Ridge or something the mountain man um romantic yeah. writing which so that's probably. one way to plan a series and I did like the way she talked about the Insta Love series and how to plan it. She okay. also points out to only do one series at a time because your readers will not be happy that they have to wait for the continued love story that they've been reading about. And you could also get mixed up with yeah. all the different love lines going everywhere. So she tried it. It was not good. It was not good. So she says, don't, don't do it. Oh. I'm glad you said that because I probably skimmed right over that part. Yeah, you probably did. I actually underlined it in my book. <laughs> I highly recommend sticking to one series at a time. Thank you, Nell. And thank you, Amy. <laughs> All right. So she talks about writing in a series. Did you have anything more for those two? Like some of these chapters are one page. That yeah, they're like, yeah, no, you're good. Is your book. All right. So I'm up to series plan now. And she says she does recommend, that's the part that I highlighted, she does recommend creating a series plan. Which as a pantser, I could see that as being important. Especially if, say, this one is about, you know, five mountain men and you want a story for each one of them. You need to know all the names of all the mountain men you want to talk about. Yeah. So that you say you want this guy in, you know, story two, but you need to reference him in story one. Yep. You need to know what his name's going to be. Like you need to know the you know certain things. So I like that she points that out. And she said it can be as detailed or as loose as you want it to be, but it's highly recommended. And then she says she goes ahead and writes a synopsis or blurb for each book. And I love that. And I did that with my mysteries. I mean, they're obviously longer, but I had a blurb for each of the three books that I've got now they're not out yet but three of those books I had blurbs for them and that helped and then when I was writing book two I would reference what happened in Vegas <laughs> and so it just helped that I knew that hijinks some stuff went down in Vegas and I mentioned it lightly in in the second book the next thing she talks about is the framework which is fabulous if you get 
I mean, the book, just for the framework, and I put some stuff on the, the stickies just to make it pop out for me. In Amazon, there are these short read categories, which is, I had no idea they even existed. An hour read, a 90 minute read. I didn't what? either. Awesome. He said that and I was like, what? I know, that is so cool. So if you want to hit those, you cannot put your book in those yourself as an author, only Amazon will, and they will do it based on your page count, based on whatever calculation or they do based on the words for Kindle readers and et cetera. But it's very nice that she gives you the 12 to 21 pages, usually equates to a 30 minute read, 22 to 32 pages is 45 minute read and so on which so like we could do shorts and put out a book a week yep. which yep. could be something i do in the future just to be able to get you know the books out and the, and the words turning i mean i'm not i'm not opposed to short especially if i know like say you're on amazon and you you've got two hours to kill between flights and you forgot a book or you're, you've read all your books on Kindle. Mm -hmm. I can look up and see how long this book is going to take me to read it. Like I can look for a two hour book. Yes, please. <laughs> like now that I know that's an option, like it, it could be something that you could gear your writing towards. Yeah. And I've read there because the whole one hour read, there's a one hour read and then you go, there's a whole list of all the genres. So mystery, sci-fi, fantasy, et cetera in each of those short read categories, which is cool. See, I think of books as part one, part two, part three. But if you broke it down to three books in a series and you make them short, hmm. then you could have three books that are short. You could. And not one big fat book that's a series. That's three parts in one book. As long as you are telling your readers that you are doing that because you don't want to get those... Um, reviews that say this is not a whole story you have to buy the yeah 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 this is part one of three parts yes say it 50 times and highlight it yeah in this framework she also gives you a breakdown of the others and beats which is cool i'm trying to get that in and i like that she breaks it down based on your word count you want for the book yeah like if this is going to be your word count then here you go but if this is going to be your word count then here you go like i like how she does that Gives you a better idea of where all your beats are supposed to be so that you keep the reader moving along. Right. And again, just like with all the other books we've read, the frameworks, the Save the Cat and all the, the Trubies and such, that's what they say to do. That's guidance. And then as you write your own short romance, you can do whatever you want. You can have longer, shorter, whatever. Um, if you're trying to hit a category, you have to have it within the, the parameters but where you put your beats or how you do your beats, that's up to you. But I think it's really nice to have a standard to work towards. Yeah. And I love that the next the next one, because we talk about Becca Symes. We do talk about Becca. Her next one, she's basically like, here's Becca, go do her thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not affiliated. I'm not associated. It's just awesome. Go do her thing. And I love, I love that she does that. It's like there's no. There's no affiliation in here for her to say that. I highlighted that part. That's where she says, go take Becca Symes, write better, faster course. Which it's is one of the courses that I have written down to take when I'm done with all the ones I've already brought. But it is a course that I have written down that I want to take. Now, have you taken that one? Actually, this is a part of the show where I should say, you, you should watch one of our previous episodes where I talked about taking Becca Symes two of her classes. And for those of you who missed it, just look into our show episodes and the Becca Syme Write Better Faster and off the other author class that she teaches. It was that. three or four videos back. Yeah. During, is it your interview one? Is it your interview video? Is that the one where we talk about it? I think that's the one where I go into a little bit more depth. Yes. And we'll link that in the show notes. This is also a good time to mention that we'd like you to like and subscribe, please. Yes. So other authors can find us. Please do tell them all about us, all about this goofiness that's going on. <laughs> okay. So she talks about getting an idea in that next, the seed of an idea in the next chapter. And then she talks about release strategies, which is cool. And how 
rapid releasing will get you higher in the algorithm. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, the word? What is the word you're looking for? Algorithm. <laughs> To get you noticed faster and then get your readers coming back for more. They know there's a book coming out every two weeks or or however, whatever your schedule is going to be. And then and that, that's that reminds me. So here I have at the end of this one, I said short equals release advantage weekly. Right. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting in some of the panels over the years of 20 books and listening to authors say, I've written 200 and yada, 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 or whatever. And I'm now realizing that they're not the same length of book that I write. They write short. Some of them do. And like, it's totally like, I used to be like, oh my gosh, I'm how old and how many books would I have to put out to even get to that before I'm six feet under? Like, there's no way, right? But if you do short, and you get to where you do one a, a week or two a month, like that's significant. It is. It could be. And it's great for the old bottom line too. And then we talk about this. This is a dirty word. It's not a dirty word. It's just one that we've both been avoiding. Yes. we. That's a good word for it. We're avoiding it. I'm supposed to be doing that for my author site and then also for the the right crowds. You guys are going to get information about our newsletter soon. Just write, like and subscribe here and then you'll get all and the you'll get insight. Yes. And then she gives, uh, I love that she gives an example of how to write, how she writes a short romance with the prologue. And she says, this is a few paragraphs at best, best. And I only use it if I need to introduce some backstory. And then chapter one, where she's hitting those beats, introduce the female main character and the male main character. And she even has short paragraphs. It's a freezing, it's freezing cold today. I briefly wonder why I chose to move to the mountains. So you have to, you have to speak like that when you read. <laughs> I briefly wonder, you have to have a higher voice. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Nell. I'm sure it's, <laughs> but I love that she gives a really great example of how she would write it out. Yeah, I I like that it, and she literally goes all the way through what her, what it looks like. All the way through all of the chapters. And I started highlighting a lot in uh, chapter four, before chapter four, she talks about the differences between writing spicy and writing squeaky clean romance and how that's different would be different in a chapter three and a chapter four, et cetera. And don't get them confused. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I made a, a teensy bit of a mistake. <laughs> I was looking for short romances and I did not. Understand. Well, you found one. It just wasn't I, what you were looking for. I found some very spicy stuff. <laughs> There's anything wrong with spice, but I was just, I was looking for a light, just sweet closed door. Every genre is for someone and every genre is not for someone else. And yeah, I, I read spicy books, but this time I was looking, the cover looked like a sweet romance. And so that's what I thought I was getting. And that's not what I got, but it was fine. Uh, then um, she, again, the difference is um, if you write, if you do write the kiss, it has to be the kind of kiss that would end the world. So if you're writing the kiss in your book, so she gives you some little tips like that. And he over here, I highlighted for the kiss in chapter five, intimacy and falling in love, chaste and light. But inside they are screaming that they will marry this person before they spontaneously combust with love and desire. That's what they're feeling on the inside. But it's, it's a sweet romance, a clean romance. So it's just a chaste light kiss. Anyway, so yes, yeah, she goes all the way through all of the chapters. Usually it's not that many chapters. So in here, this example goes through chapter eight and that's the end of the book is chapter eight. And then the I like that she points out in the epilogue when you're doing a series, this is where you use the opportunity to introduce and get your readers hooked on the characters in your next book. So you, you get them hooked. They want to know what happened with Bob and Sue. And now they're looking for Bob and Sue's book. And she also points that out when you're doing your Amazon, the next chapter is about the back matter. When you're doing your Amazon to pay attention, they only want you to do so many 
links and clicks in the back, but make sure that you include the link for the next book. Yes. Because that's how you're going to get people to go to the next one. Is if you and I can tell you this as a just a human, if you make it hard, it's least likely that someone's going to do it. The easier you make it, the better the follow through. Yes. So if you make it easy for them to just click right there on your Kindle, click, and the book comes up, and you've got a a, a great lead in from the previous book, they'll. I mean, I'd sit there and read the, the second book. I mean, especially if it's a short, I'll just, I'll, I just keep reading. I've yeah. done it before. I'm like, wait, what happened? All right. So, and then she takes you, like Amy said, all the way through the back matter and how to structure that. And then she gives you some links to her, Nell, Nell Alexander, and mentions some of the other authors in the book, like we sp- spoke about that time, Zoe York the big short romance writer and Gwen Hayes who writes that romancing the beat novel. So that's it for how to write short romance. Anything else from you, Amy? I don't think so. All right. Well, I will mention one other thing we did review, go back and look. We did review seven figure fiction by T Taylor and it's got all of the butter in there and mentions the trope. You got to say it the right way. The butter. The butter. The butter. <laughs> it's full of the butter that you would put in your short romance. Yes, they they would they go very well together. They do go back very well together, so. Well, that's it for us. Make sure to like and subscribe and come back for another episode of The Right Crowd. Bye. Bye.